You guys know I love my pork chops, and this has been on my bucket list. We're trying Korobuda pork. We got a two-bone chop. If you guys want to see how we make this, here we go. Got to be honest, I'm pretty excited about this one. This idea come from Chef Tim Clowers. He was a guest on the Flat Top King on our back porch. We did a fantastic breakfast recipe. He's played around with this idea. I'm going to kind of use it my way, okay? So this is the idea. We have a Kabuda style double bone-in pork chop from Snake River Farms. We got it like a... Say that again. What else I say? Kabuda? Yeah. Yeah. Karabuda. Karabuda. However it's called. Starts with a K. You can look it up. It's basically a uh, Berkshire pig, well marbled, England style, like it's like a top quality piece of pork. Never had it before, so when we did our uh, mystery box, kind of like hodgepodge of this and that from Snake River Farms, this is one of them. Huge fan of pork chops myself, so I think we've got a good one for you. So here's the idea. We have a double bone pork chop here, we got some cheesecloth. Spent a little money and got some orange liqueur. You guys can do triple sec, something similar. And we have a little salt. The idea is we're going to wrap this pork, with, or we're going to season the pork with a little salt, wrap it in cheesecloth, douse it pretty well with some of that orange liqueur, and let it sit overnight in the refrigerator until tomorrow when we can cook it. Paper towel, just dab it dry just a little bit. All right, just a couple pinches of salt for a little dry brown action. Got some cheesecloth, and we're just going to tightly wrap it. Just kind of lightly douse that cheesecloth on one side, turn it over, kind of do the same thing. Alrighty, in the refrigerator it goes, uncovered exactly like you see it until tomorrow when we start cooking it. Alrighty, we have the Weber calmed down. Um, I did the two zone system, kind of like the snake method. Um, we just put the coals on the left side, only started a few charcoals, added there. I've also added my smoke and pecan pellets mixed in, because I feel like it gives a good smoke flavor. I substitute that now instead of wood chips. So this is the day after. This is literally 24 hours, almost right on the dot. We did it about four o'clock yesterday and it's roughly that time right now. Definitely smells orangey, I can tell you that. As you notice, not a lot of moisture. So hopefully this uh, pork absorbed a lot of that salt and a lot of that liqueur. You see a lot of that drying out of the meat. That's gonna pair perfectly when we sear it. I'm not necessarily gonna trim it. I'm a big fan of the pork fat. The pork feels just a touch dry. So I'm just gonna do a light coat of a neutral oil to help the seasoning stick. Something like that. We're gonna use shake that. That simple salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. I think it's a neutral flavor, so I shouldn't overpower it that much. Plus I got a little secret at the end that I think is gonna pair perfectly with this. Big cut of meat, should be able to handle it. We got our chef temp meat probe. Put that right in the middle. Be rocking that today for the internal temp. And now we're ready. All righty, rocking around 250. Um, if you notice on the charcoal center, uh, the Kamado, whichever you want to call it, mine's an old one. So I've got the charcoal center set higher up instead of lower. Uh, like I mentioned, the coals are way off here to the left. So we're gonna use this side as a smoke side. And we're just gonna simply enough bring it up to temp. We're looking at about 120 degrees. 
Alrighty, we have pulled the pork chop. We have allowed it to kind of rest and stabilize. Um, anytime you pull a meat, it's gonna to continue to rise somewhat. Once it stops rising and you start seeing those numbers drop a little bit, you should be good to go. We have adjusted the grill. Let's take a quick peek really quick. I moved all the coals over. I did add more charcoal because I do want a hot spot. And that's what we got going right there. Blistering hot. Half the side because we're going to do those grill marks. Because really quickly, if you guys have not seen the video, I try not to promote myself that much. I know what you're thinking. The point is we made a fantastic smoked hot pepper jelly had a family get together and they loved it. Friends have loved it. Families loved it. So far it's fantastic. So what we're gonna do, this is the idea. We're gonna take a little bit and use this as a glaze for this pork chop. Since it's got that citrus in it. If you're not, if you don't wanna watch the video, very simply we smoked jalapenos and uh, habaneros, strained the juice out and then made the jelly mix. Whoa, that thing's smoking. Made some jelly mix. But the kicker was I added some orange peel, kind of like the idea of an orange marmalade. I think it's gonna pair perfectly with this. All we're looking to do is just melt this down. If you don't have this, you can use like an apricot jelly. You can buy store-bought pepper jellies. Um, peach would be a good one. Quick little tip, you notice I put it on top and not on the bottom really quick because this is the first side that's gonna look the prettiest and that um, sugar will caramelize extremely fast. You don't necessarily want that. So this flame's coming up, it's getting some of the residual grease left over, which is fine. Shut the lid just a second to calm it down. We'll be able to do hash marks on it. And then once we flip it, we'll be able to glaze it, move it off and finish. I'm looking about 140, degrees because i think it's going to continue to rise you're only looking about two minutes aside Quickly, just to recap, we soaked it overnight in this orange liqueur wrapped in cheesecloth. We added a little salt for kind of like a browning action. Uh, we also were able to smoke it, bring it up to about 125 to 127 degrees. Uh, we used some of those uh, smoke pecan pellets as some smoke flavor as well. And then once we started searing it, we started glazing it with that hot smoked jalapeno hot pepper jelly that we made on the channel. And so when it's all said and done, you should have something fantastic like this. So... I'm excited. Definitely on my list of things to try. Hope you guys step out of your comfort zone and try things as well. You guys can see it's, ooh, boy, that is juicy. Mm. Ooh. I know it smells amazing. Golly. Can you see it in the light? I'm trying to. That is juicy. <sighs> All right, honey, cheers. Uh-huh. I know it's going to be fantastic. Mm. <gasps> Being brutally honest, I do think you get the orange liqueur. You do. It's definitely not overpowering. You might be thinking, why do it like this versus just marinating? I didn't want it to really just soak completely in the liquid. I wanted some airflow to move through there, and I think that benefited us. Ironically, I think the pepper jelly is kind of like so far on the back end that you get the smoke, you definitely get the liquor flavor, the pork as juicy as can be. Do I think it's as good or not as better? Sometimes we get those um, Swift packages and we could two bone them ourselves. The French cut pork chops, the roast. I don't know if I'm ready to go that far, <clears throat> but it's definitely on my bucket list. I'm glad I'm trying it. You know what I think, honestly? Golly, I don't it know. would be better if it was one bone because then it would be thinner. 
and then you would get you would get more flavor you know because then you would get kind of like more uh jelly and marinade type of stuff i mean that is just and that could be because the pork itself that could be the benefit Here. of having a premium pork we need to turn it towards the light yeah i hope that's better now and that's the benefit of having a good thermometer. We always mention how important it is to cook to the correct temperature. And this is no different. Golly. <laughs> I mean, it's just. And you got the fat cap there too. I mean, that's going to be a perfect bite. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go inside and enjoy this. This is really fun. If you guys have any information, we'll have a link to Snake River Farms down below. I mentioned before, we don't necessarily go after the most expensive item. So that idea like, hey, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. We don't do it all the time. We have a tremendous list of things that we want to buy and we put off the back burner and so on and so on because we're just like you guys, we're watching our opinions as well. But when it comes to like getting a good deal, I thought it was and I wanted to try it. So not bad at all. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. <laughs> oh yeah, let me try that piece. Oh honey. Oh. Well, no, you can we'll have, you can have we'll that one. It. We'll split it. <laughs> oh. Mm, it's crunchy too. Man, I'm telling you. Mm. That's a damn good pork chop. Mm -hmm. Good job, kid. Good job. That smoked pepper jelly. Yeah. And the orange liqueur. Mm. That's good.